Assalamu alaikum. My name is Kimberly. My Islamic name is Khadija. I reverted to Islam in 2017. And I started this channel to help build myself a community of Muslim brothers and sisters and to learn more about Islam because I was struggling with my faith. It's been a really nice experience. I have gotten tons of support from Muslim brothers and sisters from around the world and I really appreciate it. So thank you. I am doing better and I get my Fajr prayer done almost every day and I also typically get one more prayer done during the day. I am learning how to organize my day around prayer instead of fitting prayer into my day. One other thing that has come up many times in the comments has been about my hijab. I don't wear a hijab regularly. I do wear it to mosque and I wear it during Ramadan. I personally have never felt very comfortable in my, in my hijab. I find that it's kind of hot. If I get kind of, I call it the helmet, like the helmet kind that like is made out of like a spandex I can keep it on my head otherwise when I pray it tends to fall off my head I stick myself with pins and I don't have a good experience with it I have thought about wearing it for my Muslim brothers and sisters just out of respect for this channel but somebody said to me, he said, oh, if you wear that hijab, wait to see how many likes you get. And I don't want to do that. A hijab is the sign of submission to Allah. It's not something that should be exploited or used for likes on a video. So I don't know. I feel a bit hypocritical if I wear it for the video but I am going to ask everybody to kind of comment and give me your thoughts on this um, and maybe some ideas and what you think is best. So I'm working on the five pillars of Islam and last week I focused on the Shahada and the seven conditions of Shahada and the second pillar is Salah or prayer. Muslims have the obligation to pray five times a day and then there's special prayers you can do for different holidays or different times of the day. Now the Quran has different areas where it talks about times of the day to pray like in the beginning and the, the two ends of the day but it doesn't specifically say five times a day. So while I was researching this, I came across the story of the Isra and the Mirage. And I absolutely love the story. And I want to share it with you. So the Isra was this, it translates into night journey. And it was this beautiful, and I feel like I can't find the word to describe how beautiful it was but it was this beautiful night journey that Muhammad took with the angel Jibril from Mecca to Jerusalem and then there is the mirage that translates to the ascension which is where he ascended from earth up into the lotus of the utmost boundary where he had a meeting with Allah. So I want to share that with you now. It was the year 621. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was deep within his year of sadness. In this year, he had lost his dear wife, Hadija, and he also lost his favorite uncle, Abu Talib, who had raised him since his father and grandfather had passed away. He would often seek refuge in prayer and he enjoyed going to the Kaaba 
in the still of the night when no one was around and he was alone and he would pray to Allah. One evening when he was at the Kaaba, they say that a sleep came upon him that was so heavy, he prayed and he laid on the floor and fell asleep. He was only awakened to somebody shaking him. And he looked and it was the angel Jibril, known as Gabriel, who had actually had to shake him three times to wake him. But now he was awake and he rose to his feet. And the angel Jibril said, Muhammad, you must come with me. So he did. And he walked out the door of the Kaaba and there was a glorious white creature that looked like it was part donkey and part mule. It had the face of a woman and the tail of a peacock and it went by the name al Burak. The angel Jibril told the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that they had a journey ahead. And they began to ride through the night until they reached Jerusalem. And they entered Al-Aqsa, the great mosque in Jerusalem. And here he came upon Musa, known as Moses. And they would sit and they prayed and they drank tea and they ate dates and they discussed all the things that the prophets discussed. And once this meeting was over, the angel Jibril said, Muhammad, please, we have more to do. And he got back on Al Barak and they began to fly into the air. They ascended over the lands and over the mountains. They ascended up into the clouds and into the sky. They were in the space among the stars until they reached the first layer of heaven. And once they did that, they ascended a bit further. And this is actually called the mirage or known as the ascension. And once they got into the layers of heaven, he ran into more prophets. He ran into Musa, Moses, he ran into Abraham, Abraham. He ran into our dear prophet Isa, also known as Jesus. And together they prayed and they drank tea and they ate dates and they discussed all the things that prophets discuss. And when the meeting was complete, the angel Gabriel turned to our prophet Muhammad and said, you're going to go the rest of the journey on your own. I can go no further or else my wings will melt. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did just that. He mounted Al Barak and he climbed through the seventh layer of heaven and he climbed as high as he could go to the utmost boundary lotus. And this is where he met with Allah. He never saw Allah's face, he only heard his voice. And he asked Allah about our prayer and how many times a day we should be praying. And Allah told him, he said, you need to pray 50 times a day. And the Prophet Muhammad said, yes, Allah, we will begin praying 50 times a day. And he began descending through the heavens and he ran into Musa, Moses, who said, oh my goodness, Muhammad, these people are much too lazy and they will never pray 50 times a day. Go back to Allah and tell him we need to pray less. So he goes to Allah and he says, I think that's too many times. Can we do less? And Allah says, sure, we will do 45. So as he descends, the prophet Muhammad sees Musa again who said it's still too many prayers. He goes back up to Allah, who offers to reduce it to 40. And these behaviors continue through the night. He goes to Allah, who tells him how many to pray. He stops at Musa, who says we need to do it less times because people are too lazy. Finally, Allah tells the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that they will pray five times a day. 
and not to be worried because he did not change his mind. It's just that for every prayer that we do, he will accept it tenfold. So if we pray five times a day, that'll be the same as 50. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was so happy with that. And he said, thank you, Allah, we'll do that. And as he climbs down through the heavens and he sees Musa, Musa said, five times is still too many. These people are lazy. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, I can't go back. I'd be too embarrassed to ask for anything more. And he continued his dissension down through the heavens and down through the skies and down through the stars and onto the land. He met the angel Jibril said, Prophet Muhammad, it's time to go home. And they rode through the night on the back of Al Barak until he reached the door of the Kaaba. And this is where they parted ways. And it was morning. So he ran to his friend's house and he told her the story of the night. And she said, Oh my goodness, Muhammad. Please do not share this with anyone. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not feel that it was right to keep this to himself. So he went to the streets and he began to tell his story of how he rose to, through the heavens and was told by Allah that they should be praying five times a day and each one is worth ten. And as his friend had predicted, the people thought, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had gone mad. And they spoke behind his back and they spoke in whispers. And they said, Muhammad has reached the end. He is certainly crazy now. And Muhammad faced great ridicule from the Quraysh, the non-believers. And he lost some people. Some people that were Muslims decided to leave. They said he was too nuts and they're not going to do it. And he kept some of the Muslims he had. Not everybody thought he was crazy and left. He also gained some Muslims who thought that the story was beautiful. Everyone who followed Muhammad, peace be upon him, also began praying five times a day. And this is what we still to this day do. And it all began with the Isra and the mirage. I hope you enjoyed the story as much as I did. I absolutely love it. There are questions that the Islamic scholars discuss regarding if this was actually a physical experience that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had or if it was a spiritual journey. As the Islamic scholars go, they say that it was actually physical and spiritual. I'm not an Islamic scholar, but I feel that it was spiritual and, and I guess mental. So maybe it is physical, but I think it was a spiritual journey because Islam is a religion of the heart and mind. I read an article the other day about prayer in the brain, and I'll link it below. It's not a scholarly article, but it is very interesting about how prayer affects the brain. It actually shuts down other parts of the brain. And I started to think that maybe he was just so tired and exhausted from all his sadness that year. And then he went to pray and it like shut down down so much of his brain and he was so tired that that allowed him to let the angel Jibril in so that he could have this experience and follow him. But in the end, this is why Muslims pray five times a day. It was actually established through our prophets Muhammad and Musa, peace be upon them on the night of the Isra and the Mirage. So, hey, thank you all for subscribing. Thank you all for all your likes and all your comments and all your support. And I just 
pray that I'm using all that energy that you're giving me for learning Islam and becoming a better Muslim. So, assalamu alaikum, and I'll see you next week.